And okay, everybody wants to be smarter. I mean, you talked about the smart pill. I I think I would take a smart pill if I could. But because these smart pills aren't around and we can't do gene, gene therapy to make ourselves smarter, I think it would be nice to end our conversation with some sort of uh, prescription or ideas for how people could become smarter. But it doesn't seem like there really are any. I mean, there are these brain teaser apps, these sorts of things. Do any of those hold water or are there any suggestions that you do have? I mean, reading makes you more knowledgeable. I don't know if it makes you smarter, but what what are your thoughts on, on this constellation of, of questions here? Uh, well, the short answer is no, none of them work to raise IQ let alone the G factor. The real test is whether or not the latent G variable will increase, not whether the test score increases. You know, if you take if you take an IQ test when you have the flu and a hundred and two temperature, you're going to get a score. A month later, when you're better, you take an IQ test again, you're going to get another score. Obviously, one is going to be a better estimate of your ability than the other. Okay, so raising scores is not really the issue. But a latent G change is really the criterion. And I don't know of anything that does that. You know, education maybe adds a little bit, but it's not so clear how much and how much education. Um, so the answer is no. Uh, parents will try anything even in parents who deny IQ is important, will try anything to get, you know, any educational toy that might increase uh, child's intelligence. Um, but the short answer is no. The long answer is no, nothing works so far. But I would be one of the first to do it if it existed. I'd like to take an IQ pill, sure. I mean, what's the downside? Yeah, well, I guess my question raised another question for me, something that we, we didn't discuss, is what the relationship is between knowledge and intelligence. Because we we sometimes conflate the two in the vernacular. I mean, if somebody has read a lot of books and knows a lot of facts, we just say that they're intelligent. But the same person can have not read those books and have the same amount of intelligence, even if they don't possess those facts. Well, it's a little bit. It's a little bit like knowing that vocabulary tests are high on G, and you say, "I am going to learn better vocabulary." Uh -huh. So you you have the Reader's Digest list of words, or you know, and and then you try to use those words in the sentence, and it doesn't really go so well for many people. Okay, <laughs> because it's not the fact that you have the vocabulary is just an index that you can learn that you you've you've learned vocabulary in your reading in your experience in life and you you know what those words mean and you can use them appropriately there's nothing funnier than someone trying to appear intelligent by using words that they clearly don't know the con the right context you know overly sophisticated words. So um, I just, there's just nothing. <laughs> there's just, just nothing is going to raise that G factor yet. That's why I think the uh, it's going to be a neurobiological, uh, it's a neurobiological problem, I think. And it may not be solvable. I mean, it may not be possible. Well, if it is that raises a a hundred other questions, huge social implications, but I think we've done uh, as much as we can today. So thank you so much for talking with me. This was so great. Well, I'm happy to do it. I'm always happy to talk about it. And uh, if people want to uh, know more, I got a couple of books, you can see, find them on Amazon. And um, if you really want to get into it, those books have plenty of scientific references. So everything I'm talking about is really supported by a weight of scientific evidence. And that's a thought I'd like to leave everyone.